Number 194 in the imprint collection is Burn or Kumada. Uh, I think the most interesting facet about this movie is how I had never came across it. Never heard of it before. It's one of those movies that came completely out of the blue. I love Brando. I love the Battle of Algiers. So the director of that, working with Brando, seems like a, a great movie that comes in two versions, which made me wonder if maybe that was what the problem was. There's the original Italian version. There is the uh, export version, which is a little bit short, about 16, 17 minutes, I believe. Um, I went for the export cut, uh, cut first just to check it out. I wasn't sure what kind of movie I was getting. And almost immediately, this thing is fascinating, wonderful. It draws you into this amazing story. You have Sir William Walker, played by Brando, who uh, arrives at Kemada an island where there's lots of sugar plantations, uh, the city. people that live there have been subjugated by the rich aristocracies from around the world who have come there to pretty much strip them of their, their worth, uh, use them and kind of abuse them and he comes in there as a member of the, the, the city British Navy, secretly almost. English. Come on, let's go then. And he comes into this island and watching this character for the first 15-20 minutes was just fascinating because I didn't know what he was up to. You know, it starts off where he comes in and he's looking uh, for someone specific. He's looking for someone that's going to maybe fight back against what's happening to the people on this island. And he meets Jose Dolores, who is a man that's willing to maybe fight back against the white man when they're constantly being subjugated. And he uses this person for his own means in a really clever way that, again, kept me guessing through the start of the movie. There are soldiers. Yes, I've seen them. The boat? It's over there behind the soldiers. And us? I brought weapons. He gets him to get a group of people to rob a bank. This is the plan, this is what's going to happen. And you feel as if, well, I felt as if he was going to take the money and run. He gets the money. He doesn't run. In fact, he starts to go to the authorities and be like, you know, they've got a lot of gold in this small village. It seems strange just after a robbery's happened. Pointing the army towards this village. He then buys a load of guns and goes to the village, giving it to Jose Dolores and the rest of his men and saying, you're going to have to fight. And it becomes quite apparent that he's starting an uprising, starting a revolution with Jose Dolores as the sort of figurehead to that. He is starting this fight back so that they can get control from the Portuguese that kind of run this island into British hands. And it's such a great performance by Brando because he keeps things so close to his chest. He is really warm uh, with Jose Dolores as they kind of form a bond. They become almost uh, friends at certain points. You announce nothing. There's nothing from you. Only that you try not to be caught again. I go on having much time. And it just creates this wonderful story of um, these people kind of uprising against the aristocracies, the people with money, the people that are keeping them subjugated. And it does it in such violent sequences and brutal attacks that it keeps you on the edge of the seat action, makes you wondering what's going to happen, how uh, the next step is going to evolve, but always there in the background is Brando as Walker, this character who is just pulling all the strings, a perfect puppet master. And it's a wonderful performance. And things take a turn in the second half uh, after Brando is called back to the island when it turns out that Dolores is actually more powerful than they wanted and now Walker has to kind of quell this insurrection that he started and things... Um, well, I don't want to talk about the second half of the movie because it, I think it's worth checking out. But I like this one a lot because it really shows you the manipulative nature of the rich and powerful. How they're constantly taking these people and pretty much just using them 
to get whatever they want. Initially, storming the island, taking it for its sugar canes, causing plantations, uh, abusing uh, the, the people who belong on the island, uh, who have grew up on the island, and then causing, a, <laughs> causing an insurrection just because it helps what they want and then quelling it because they no longer need it anymore. This is very manipulative people um, basking in their wealth and unwilling to deal with the indigenous people of this land. Now you will see. They're even going to chop his head off. I know. It's phenomenally shot. It looks amazing and you've got amazing performances. The actor that plays Jose Dolores, whose name I, I won't pronounce properly, is fantastic in this role. There's a, a sequence later on where he's kind of walking through his people after taking charge of the island. And there is, it just holds on him for such a long time and he's looking like excited, happy, sad, worried. It just carries all these emotions through this sequence where you you know, you can feel the complexity of the character coming to the forefront. Um, this was a phenomenal movie. One that could be easily overlooked if you haven't seen it uh, or haven't heard anything about it. I haven't watched the Kumada version as yet, but I will. This was terrific. Let's have a jump in, look at some of the extras on the disc. So here we are in the disc for Burn, the export cut. I'm going to go into the extra features. First up, we have an audio commentary by film historians Elaine Silver and Jim Arzini. Next up, we have the Brando Interregnum, uh, the decade of Marlon's Dirty Dozen, 1962 to 1972, which is a fantastic extra, 21 minutes, one second, discusses the dozen films he made between uh, One Eye Jacks and The Godfather. Uh, really just fascinating, touching on a part of these movies that were deemed to be not as great as the rest of his filmography. Then we have Neil Sinyard on Burn, which is 25 minutes and four seconds. Talks a lot about the production, the impact of the movie, uh, some of the aspects of the film, and it's a, just a great talking head. Next we have The Stalwalt Rebel, Brando in the 1960s, a documentary with the Brando uh, biographer William J. Mann. This is 28 minutes, 42 seconds, and pretty much just talks about the impact that Brando had on cinema, the culture, the pop culture, uh, things like that, as well as a lot of his performances, and of course this film. Then we have Of Oppressors and Oppressed, an interview with film historian Ivelise Perignola, uh, which is 33 minutes, 13 seconds, and uh, she really gets into the nitty gritty of the film, focusing a lot on how it came together, uh, the political moments of it, um, the cast, how a lot of the people were uh, non-actors who were brought in, a lot of people had never seen a film camera before, it's really quite fascinating stuff. Then we have uh, J-Lo and Me, an interview with editor Mario Mora, uh, which is 24 minutes, 21 seconds, uh, with the, uh, the editor talking about how he first met um, the director on Capo and how he kind of kept bumping into him, ultimately working with him and the respect that he had for him. Then we have a Family Affair, which is an interview with uh, his son and his wife, which uh, is 29 minutes, 57 seconds. And it's just great to hear these people lovingly talk about this uh, figure in their life. And finally, we have an archival interview with Gilo Pontecorvo, which is 10 minutes. And uh, it's just a nice little archival that's thrown in to round out this wealth of extras on this disc. In disc two in this set, Quimada, we have the original Italian cut, running 17 minutes more than the export English cut, which comes with English subtitles and the theatrical trailer is the only extra on this disc. So there we have it, number 194, Burn Quimada. A highly recommended, terrific movie. I didn't know a thing about it and I utterly loved it. Great performances, cinematography, amazing story, a great performance from Brando. 
but a great performance from everyone in the film to be honest I would love to know your thoughts on Burn if you have seen it or Quimada whatever version you have seen I would love to know the differences between the two versions because I'm going to check out Quimada in the next week or so I think um, see what the differences are myself as always I would love to hear your thoughts on this one so let me know in the comment box below while you're down there hit this video with a like there is more content up here if you want to see more of my videos and in the description box below are links to the Patreon membership program manvfilm.com all ways in which you can support me thanks for watching and I'll see you next time